Hello everyone and welcome to the release announcement for Pekka Starship and Super Heavy and Tower and Launch Mount and soon to be Tank Farm in a few weeks. Uh, this is a mod that I have been using for a little bit. I've been helping to test it out and I helped with the textures a little bit. Uh, but yeah, hopefully my recent testing has whetted people's appetite to get their hands on it. The link will be in the video description. There are two versions. There's one version for KSP 1.8.1 and one version for 1.12. And the difference is they're both for realism overhaul. If you're trying to use it in stock, uh, I don't think P.E.K.K.A. balanced it for stock. So you're going to have to adjust the dry masses, the fuel quantities, and the thrust of the engines, and the efficiency of the engines. So those are things you would want to take a look at in the stock configs and you'll probably have to delete the RO config or something like that. But it's mainly for realism overhaul and it's full size and everything. And the difference between the two versions 1.8.1 and 1.12 is residuals. Basically in 1.8.1 uh, there are no residuals in realism overhaul. So for that version it'll, it has one, fuel, uh, one dry mass and then for 1.12 it has a different dry mass one that means that the residuals are sort of taking part in the dry mass, if you will. So it adjusts for that. I have tested it. It uh, gets to orbit, reserving the fuel for Super Heavy and Starship to return. It gets to orbit with a 100 ton payload. If you expend both, it can get to orbit with 200 tons. That is what it seems to be capable of. And uh, Pekka was initially considering putting a craft file in but there are some complications with that. So I'm going to describe how to put it together and we'll see whether there's some way of putting the craft file. Uh, Pekka is using 1.8.1. Pekka can't include the 1.12 craft file or I don't know how that would work out because of course uh, that it, his version doesn't have residuals in or anything like that and the mass is a different. So anyway, complications. So the tank farm will be coming soon. Uh, there's complications with that because I think we want to implement that as a Kerbal Constructs thing, but that's weird too. Uh, if you add it to the pad, you'll see the pad is sort of wiggly when you take it out, and so it's not great to try to attach the tank farm to the pad because it's probably going to be even worse. It depends on what kind of terrain you place it on. If you take it out to the regular KSC pad, of course the orbital launch mount you'll see will be on the main part of the pad, but the tower is going to be hanging off to the side, and that throws things off sometimes. So you'll notice that I've put launch clamps on. That helps and is probably essential. Uh, if you don't want the launch clamps on, you're going to have to make sure that this thing is sitting on very level ground. And that's probably the only way to get, get away with it. Okay, but uh, do have hangar extender. That's an essential mod for allowing this to exist and for you to put it together. And without further ado, I'll show you how to put it together, assuming that you get it from the video description. So, type in P.E.K.K.A, P-E-K-K-A, and we have the Starship, and uh, let's leave it like this while we're attaching the fins, but we'll want to rotate it by 90 degrees eventually. So, flap top left, press D, uh, hold Alt to attach, and then 3 and then having snap on, uh, holding down shift, it's two notches, 10 degrees. So if you hold down shift with uh, the snap on, it's five degrees each time. If you don't have shift on, then it's 15. So here, D, flip it around. It has to be oriented the way, you know, when we pull it out here, it's oriented this way. That's so that it actuates in the right direction. It has to be that way. So there's no way to rotate it ahead of time for the end user, unfortunately. Otherwise, it won't do what it's supposed to do, especially with far. So holding down shift and turn. OK, so then we have the big flaps in the back and D and there and D flip and there. And let's pull that up. OK, so now we've got the flaps on. We'll just put the engines on as well. So gimbling engine, Raptor gimbal, Raptor boost, Raptor vacuum. We want Raptor gimbal. And then I think if you put it on this one, the pipes line up automatically. So if you don't want to have to rotate those. And then the vacuum engines, I don't care about the pipes, but let's, that's probably wrong. 
Uh, it's probably this one. Okay. And then turn off the gimbling. Just in case you want it, there's a gimbal option. I don't know what the gimbling is, but we're just going to turn that off. And then let's action group them, because in practice you'll probably want to do that. I use 10 for the boost engines on the Super Heavy, uh, 9 for the set of 10, the middle ring, 8 for the center 3 on Super Heavy, 7 for the center 3 here, so we're going to do that. And we'll also toggle gimbal like that, and 6 for the vacuum engines. And you'll probably want some sort of mount in the cargo bay. I usually use my own payload adapter, but uh, you can use one of these uh, procedural ones from procedural fairings. And so procedural ring, uh, w procedural rib ribbed payload adapter. Downside is these have the fairing nodes built in. Mine's does not. Probably six meters will be fine and then sort of tuck it in. The whole cargo bay arrangement, obviously we don't know what it's going to look like, but I have all sorts of ideas about different ways of making that happen. So we'll explore those some other time. Alright, at this point I'll rotate it this way so that everything will be lined up properly. Oh, sorry, wrong way around. It's actually this way. Because that way it's going out. I think that's right, right? Okay, back to the P.E.K.K.A. search. And then we pull out Super Heavy. And we want to get the umbilical stuff lined up. Uh, this is right. Okay, so we can put that on like that. Okay, you have to make sure to get the right node, not one of the engine nodes. And then that umbilical connect and the one on Super Heavy is lined up. There, okay. We can get the grid fins on. They do have a texture switch on them just in case so you can have a not painted and painted. And then selecting rotation, snap, not holding down shift this time, two notches for 30 degrees. The RCS placement on Starship and Super Heavy is sort of indeterminate, so I've uh, sort of put my own thrusters on to help. The existing thruster arrangement probably isn't great for Starship. It's fine for Super Heavy's return. I didn't do anything to Super Heavy, but I added some thrusters for my own operations in the videos. I add some thrusters to Starship, so you might have to do that too. Now for the boost engines, uh, probably there's one slot that is preferable. There's 10-way symmetry with these. Uh, just, I'll just get it into one slot. Okay, so, so we'll have 10 and then another set of 10. And then there's this yellow marker here that needs to be rotated outward so that the pipes line up. So basically like that. And then we can copy that into this slot. Oh, that didn't get rotated right. Oh well. And then the little yellow marker again. Like that. Okay. So those are in. And then the gimbling ones. Ten-way symmetry in there too. But then the inner three have to be placed individually for reasons I don't understand. They try to like double up like this, regardless of which of the symmetry options you pick. So except for one, obviously. So one at a time. And I don't know what the rotation is for those. So okay. So like I said before, I put these on action group. No, not that. Uh, action group 10, okay, and action group 9 is these, and then action group 8 is those. And I also put the gimbal toggle so that they don't gimbal while they're off. Okay, so all the bottom action groups are occupied. You could put the flaps on 5, or even use more than one action group for deploying and undeploying the flaps. That's an option, but we'll pass on that for now. Over to launch mount. So, 
Uh, in order to keep this stable, the orbital launch mount is much heavier than the tower. Because if you have the tower off to the side, and it's as heavy as it ought to be, then when this applies its thrust on the orbital launch mount, the whole thing will tend to tip over because the center mass is over on one side and that makes an unbalanced situation. So we have overwhelming mass with the orbital launch mount and you want the disconnect attaching like that. The node is down here, just so that you don't get interference from all the engines. If it was closer, then it'd be tough to attach it properly. And so yeah, that is the orbital launch mount. Just in case you need to, it has the ability to top off the fuel. And so that's a feature. Uh, probably we won't need that feature right now, but the tower has a node. You can see there's a node over on that side. I have to get that, see that node there. And this has to be rotated so that the arms are actually pointing at the vehicle. And then the node, relevant node inside the tower is a little bit tough to find sometimes. But that was so that, so it's like that. Uh, that was so that it lines up properly with everything else. But if you can imagine the situation with the tank farm, in addition to all this, that would make things complicated. So that's why I uh, suggested that Pekka didn't try to add the tank farm in the VAB and make it a Kerbal Constructs thing instead, but that depends on how you feel about that. Anyway, the chopsticks do extend like that, and we need the quick disconnect arm. And that arm actually goes on a node higher than the main tower node. And that will need to be rotated. There we go. It's initially connected and then retracts, but we'll start it connected there. So with the tower being apart, that means it has a collider. And so things can interact with it and like get caught by the chopsticks in theory. In theory. <laughs> so anyway, action group wise uh, for KOS, I have the extension here. This also has an animation it, that can retract into that box there. And so it disconnects like that. And so I have that extension toggle like that and the quick disconnect arm also on too. You could have them happen at different times of two different action groups, but I have them on the same one. So that's it put together. I hope Pekka doesn't shout at me for doing something wrong. But yeah, let me just save that as new starship. Oh, and we need the staging right. Very important. So first of all, all 33 engines on Super Heavy. And then the orbital launch mount. And then the Super Heavy itself, which is functionally a decoupler with a fuel tank. and But it has a controller in. And I put the RCS of Starship at the same time so that it can keep itself steady. And then the engines. Well, I could have just shifted that down. Okay. And then the payload adapter. Oops. Okay. All right, so that's all set, and then I can save that. All right, well, right now we don't have any launch clamps, and I'm going to take it out to the main pad, which will be at Boca Chica. And let me actually explain that. So in the tracking station, we can switch launch sites as long as you have KSC switcher, and of course, real solar system. And so by default, you'll be at Cape Canaveral. If you have KSC switcher and real solar system, you can switch to Brownsville. And I have my Boca Chica terrain. I'll link that terrain pack in the video description. It includes not only Boca Chica, but Edwards Air Force Base and Tanagashima as well. Right now, it looks weird. Uh, the terrain is too low compared to the KSC terrain, the default terrain. Uh, we need to raise it up, but the problem is that the height changes when you go to the flight mode. So when you bring a rocket out, it actually changes the height of the terrain. So, yeah. Uh, in 1.8.1 it didn't do this. Uh, well, it didn't uh, change it constantly, so I constantly had to fix the height of the terrain. But here it does. 
Now, we can't change the higher terrain right now because you can't bring up the Kerbal Constructs menu unless you're in flight. So, we will do that. And I'll show you more about how Kerbal Constructs works. If the tank farm is implemented as a Kerbal Constructs thing, you might need to know that. So, we don't have any launch clamps here. And that's going to cause a problem. I will show you. If it was on perfectly level terrain, I think it wouldn't cause a problem. It might be possible to not have launch clamps and launch it from the runway. I haven't tested that out yet, but it's possible. But visually speaking, you probably don't want to do that. Oh, it's actually stable this time. Oh, aren't we lucky? Okay. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's not so stable, sometimes it is. Maybe we don't need launch clamps after all. Um, now, here's some subtleties. Uh, first of all, if you don't have it rotated right, this tower will not be sitting on the crawl away portion. If it's sitting over here or over here, it's more likely to tip over. Um, if it doesn't have launch clamps, it's more likely to tip over. We got lucky. <laughs> so. Uh, this is a happy situation, a happy accident or something, whatever. A happy lack of accidents. All right, so here it is. And Kerbal Constructs. Kerbal Constructs pops up with Control-K. And if the tank farm was implemented as a Kerbal Constructs thing, you could uh, bring it up like these fuel tanks. It's not in here right now. Um, so there's fuel tanks, and they're really small. But you could scale them up too and make a really huge fuel tank. You reckon these, recognize these guys. So you could place your own fuel tanks and everything wherever you want, but let's just delete that for now. Uh, so that's how Kerbal Construct statics work. They are placeable things and uh, Pekka will be modeling the tank farm and it might be implemented like that and you can place it wherever in your launch site that you want. Uh, if you have the Boca Chic terrain that I have here, which is part of my terrain pack, then you'll need to place it yourself as just another spawnable. And if you've located yourself at Brownsville, you can sort of put the launch site at vaguely the right location. Uh, here's the launch site over here. At vaguely the right location on the terrain. And then we're going to shift the terrain up here so that not as much of the default ground is showing. So we'll go with that. It's not going to be perfect because the default ground is lumpy, basically. So it ends up like this. And with some camera views, it'll be okay. Now again, this can be wobbly on the pad. We got lucky, so I do suggest launch clamps. And on the bright side, that would top off your methane and oxygen and keep them okay. Let's see what happens during launch here. We have no cargo inside right now. So this will be like their test launch, I guess. But it's possible that the whole thing will wiggle too much because we don't have the launch clamps. Let's see. We're in luck, uh, a rare case that everything is working out perfectly. Oh no, it's doing something. It's not supposed to do that. Uh oh, no, don't do it, why? <laughs> it was almost good, oh, it stopped. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, okay. Let, let's see the situation with launch clamps. <laughs> I mean, um, it, it was actually going surprising much, much better than I was expecting. So, putting launch clamps on. Now, there's a peculiarity to this. Of course, well, we don't really want to bust the look of this, so if you could get away with not putting launch clamps, of course you would, but... Uh, depends how much weirdness you want to tolerate. This is still Kerbal Space Program. I tend to put four. Uh, four. 
and two-way symmetry like that. Now on the tower you'll also want to clamp it down but with the tower uh, its center is actually away from it so Kerbal doesn't know how to do symmetry around it so you can't just have symmetry like this. You'll see that it's sort of like trying to figure out maybe this is its center? I don't know. Anyway, so it's gonna rotate it wrong. Probably we don't we don't want snap on for this if we want to have any chance. Okay, now four on the tower, and you can tell that it's a little bit low, so I'm gonna raise it up. Just so that the concrete bits are below the bottom of the tower. And very important, the launch clamps should not be released, so they need to be in the top, top stage. Okay, let's see if this is more stable after we launch or if things go worse. The subtleties of placement of this whole thing can make a huge difference as far as whether it's going to be wiggling on the pad too. So keep that in mind. If it's just shifted a little bit, it can do some extra wiggling. It'll eventually settle down as long as the clamps are on. Okay, there's a little bit of wiggle there, but it's stabilized pretty quickly there. And a quick disconnect just before launch. Okay, well, we're off cleanly. We'll just keep an eye on the tower to make sure it doesn't break dance again. Uh, the terrain has gotten a little bit higher. It's clipping the pad more. Okay, this time I think the tower is nice and stable with the clamps on. We don't have to worry too much about it. Yep, I think that worked. Uh, the terrain situation is imperfect. So, instead of using KSC Switcher to come to Brownsville, what you could do is you could keep the default launch site at Cape Canaveral and have a Kerbal Constructs, you could bring up the Kerbal Constructs menu and spawn a spawn point. And Pekka was trying to make a spawn point like this for people to use, but it didn't quite work out when I tried it. Uh, but there's a, let's see, a title spawn. There's a universal spawn point, and that will allow you to create a new pad that isn't the KSC pad. And so Pekka was trying to do that, but uh, that didn't work out for me in 1.12. But there, uh, Kerbal Constructs has probably changed between 1.8.1 and 1.12, so that might be why. Um, yeah, but you can create your own spawn point, and then in the VAB you can select that spawn point to materialize that and then you can have your custom pad arrangement to make it look right and then you don't have to have the KSC there there are also limitations to the terrain uh, that the Katniss version of Cape Canaveral does not have the way I did the terrain or anything that you have as a ploppable in Kerbal Constructs has a limited range of 100 kilometers so at 100 kilometers distance this is going to disappear like that. So that is a limitation of Kerbal Constructs. Uh, Kerbal Constructs was originally made for Kerbin and so 100 kilometers was not such a big deal around Kerbin. By that time you're probably beyond the horizon from the location anyway, but it's a little bit more of a deal here on Earth. So I don't know how to change that. And I don't know the particular method that Cape Canaveral HD was made, the mod by Katniss. And we're continuing with Starship. This is not going to be any sort of a big deal with Starship, after all, uh, it has no cargo right now. And again, the tested cargo was 100 tons with reserving the fuel and then 200 tons without. I guess it'll be interesting to see how much Delta V it has left once it reaches orbit, huh? Alright, the gimbling engines are off. We are now just controlling with RCS. And again, the RCS is just uh, visible ports right now, which I find lacking. 
<laughs> so if you have significant problems, do remember that you can unlock a little bit of gimbal. But I'll I I showed Pekka where I had placed the additional thrusters so that I wouldn't have this sort of issue and would also be able to translate properly. But It depends how uh, authentic we want to make this, because obviously my preferred thruster arrangements are not necessarily where Starship will have them or where SpaceX will want them. But I, I've turned the gimbling off again. Uh, it, it can handle it with the RCS, it's just not good at handling it with the RCS. It's definitely not supposed to be here. You can see it's maxing out yaw all the time. Okay, and we have shut down. It's just a little bit shy of the delta V necessary to have a free return around the moon. It probably should be able to do that for that one mission, um, Dear Moon, right? Dear Moon. Uh, but it could be fitted with extra fuel as cargo. So, I mean, you could certainly put extra methane and oxygen in the cargo bay and have a crew arrangement in the front. I don't think they're going to have that many people. So, uh, only half of the crew capacity could be people and then you could fit some extra fuel in and make that happen. So I don't think it's necessary to change it just for that because it can easily accommodate that. Let's uh, have it turn to prograde just to make sure it can do that. But yeah, re-entry uh, I have not perfected with this. That's a whole other business. It's no shuttle, let me tell you. So uh, that is still a work in progress, but otherwise Everything seems to work fine, with some caveats that, uh, well, things can be refined and Pekka is going to be refining it over the next few weeks. So if you do have suggestions, you can make it on the GitHub. Uh, so I'm sure uh, Pekka will take those into account. And again, the tank farm is being made that is part of the plans. And with this in orbit, I think I'll wrap it up here. I'll have the link in the video description. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.